G'day everyone and welcome to the Track Zone Spotlight. Matt Miller with you. I'm continuing my chat today with a Star Trek fan filmmaker, Gary O'Brien. All right, Gary, well, we spent the last episode talking about crowdfunding for Star Trek fan films, uh, but that doesn't apply to you anymore because you have this backer that's come on board to give you the entire production budget that you were after. So for those that are unaware of the Holy Court, can you tell us uh, what the storyline is? Sure, okay. Um, in a nutshell, um, the Holy Core is a next-gen era, 30-minute Star Trek fan film uh, with all original characters, all new ship, all new crew, um, and the storyline involves talking about religion, um, which incidentally I heard that uh, the showrunners for Star Trek Discovery are apparently going to be doing religion as their theme for season two, so um, that's an interesting coincidence there. Um, but but uh, so yeah, uh, The Holy Core, um, it, it deals with talking about religion and science, but not in a kind of religion versus science way, just discussing it. But we also have a lot of adventure and a lot of um, a lot of great story threads and action and excitement happening, and it's just a great script. We're really thrilled with it. People just have to wait and see it because it's one of these things. If you try and explain it too much, you end up giving the story away, and I think that would be a shame. Now that you're fully funded, what's that going to enable you to do? Well, uh, hopefully, uh, pull off. Uh, the world's best next-gen era fan film. I hope that's certainly certainly what we're, we're we're aiming for, and there's no reason why we can't do that uh, now that we have the money. Um, yeah, as long as we work hard and stay focused on it, then I'm hoping that it will be at least arguable that that's what we achieve. So fingers crossed. You're reusing the sets from Chance Encounter, but you're reinvigorating them. Yes, that's right. Well, we're, we're probably just going to reuse the shuttle pod. We built a kind of little turbo lift thing, um, and if we, for Chance Encounter, if we can find a way to repurpose that, then certainly we will. The shuttle pod will definitely be making another appearance. It's in the script probably more than it was in Chance Encounter. Um, you know, it makes sense we've got the thing built. It'd been in storage um, and I hadn't really, I'd sort of kept rough tabs on it um, just in my old shed um, and I'd kind of, it was all stacked away with a dust sheet over it and I used to kind of look at it and it always looked quite healthy but I hadn't fully investigated it until just the other day uh, when I got word that the funding was uh, coming through. So I went and kind of you know, with bated breath, check the condition of it, and thankfully, it seems like it's 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 almost perfect. Um, I, it hasn't gone mouldy, it hasn't gone damp, it hasn't all gone weird. So the good news is that the shuttle won't require too much work to get it camera ready. Although we are intending to build more um, fresh stuff to put on the front of the shuttle because because it has more screen time, we need to be able to sort of show a bit more of the shuttle this time. Um, so we're going to build the front end out, um, but the stuff that's already existing seems to be in sort of perfect condition pretty much, so we were thrilled to find that out. Now I believe you're also extending a real set uh, with some CGI. Uh, you showed us some demonstrations uh, during the crowdfunding campaign. Have you gone back to see how that's going to work? Um, not yet, but I mean I think I, I kind of know, I think I've got this, you know, got that down to speed. It'll really just come down to now building the small section of the bridge that we need um, and then photographing it properly, rigging it, uh, and, ju and just filming it in a way that will lend itself to the set extension technique that we intend to use. But the good thing is we, uh, although that's an important part of the script and the story to show the bridge, um, it doesn't rely on it, we're not hanging too much on it, and as much as we can we intend to just film in our little corner of the bridge that we're going to build, and it will only be some of the time that we actually go wider and show a bit more of the actual bridge. Um, but yeah, that's an exciting technique and certainly, you know, you can, I, I think it's something that I, would, I wouldn't want to become too reliant on that kind of set extension stuff, but I think the way we're intending to use it in a kind of just, just, a, just a small little bit that just supports what we're trying to do, then I think it's potentially a really kind of cool uh, tool to have in the old uh, filmmaking toolkit, you know. Well, at the moment, I'm following three fan film productions. Aaron Vanderclay shot in his parents' garage for the fall of Starbase One. My production was in a small green screen studio in Perth for Once More with Feeling. Whereabouts are you shooting the Holy Call? Um, 
we may go on location for a, uh, a small part but that's yet to be determined but the majority of what we're going to be doing is there's essentially it's a public space you can hire uh it's it's basically it's it's kind of a village hall i don't know if you have those in australia i can't remember from when i lived there yeah so it's kind of one of those and it's it's a strange kind of building it's just a multi-purpose building that people hire for venues and and as a venue for weddings and parties and yoga classes and that kind of thing um, it's in this quiet sleepy little village and uh, that's that's our intention is to shoot it there it's not too far from my house so it means transporting back and forth shouldn't be too much of a trouble um, so yeah that's that's where we'll be shooting the bulk of it well Gary congratulations on getting the Holy Core fully funded What's it like to get that email from someone saying, you know what, I believe in you, have all of the money you needed to make this short film? Yeah, I mean, it's very flattering, certainly. Um, it's, it's a great compliment and, you know, you feel even more responsible because rather than a huge crowd each giving you a little bit, it's just one guy that's, that's said, look, yeah, like you say, I believe in you, here's some cash, go and do something good with it. So, so yeah, it's a, a very uh, unusual but very gratifying position to be in and I'm really grateful as well, obviously. Well, just lastly, Gary, what can you tell us about this mystery donor? Okay, sure. Well, some people might actually uh, recognize his name. It's Alexander Mayer um, and he's a, a German gentleman and his, his name appears on uh, a few uh, sci-fi films that we, we might have seen, including Chance Encounter. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure he also uh, gave some money to Tommy Craft, uh, his, his film um, Runaway. Uh, it was his thing he did after Horizon, which was, uh, it wasn't Star Trek, but it was sci-fi. Um, and yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a very generous guy who loves his next gen, loves his Voyager. And uh, if he sees something that he thinks is gonna be good, then he's happy to chip in. Um, I guess he just has a little bit more available to chip in than, than some of us do, but yeah. Um, but as a very generous guy, and obviously we're thrilled that you know he's come across our work and that he supports what we're doing. Fantastic, Gary. We'll get started on pre-production because I want to see this by the end of the year, all right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see about that, but certainly coming soon anyway. Watch this space.